Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso, and today we're going to talk about an ethics technical correction. Um, and so this is related to 529 plans, which many of you are probably familiar with, uh, which are college savings accounts uh, that you can start for young children in preparation for them one day going to college. Now, this is a very interesting um, uh, correction because the feedback uh, from this in particular, the original guidance for 529 plans was issued back in 2005. And the basic conclusion that they have is that if you have a, if you're a covered member and you are an account owner, meaning that you have the owner, you're the owner on that 529 plan, you have a direct financial interest in the plan and the underlying investments. And so that was decided back in 2005 when 529 plans were relatively new. Um, my daughter uh, was born just a couple of years after that and we had, you know, we went through the process of investing. But what's really interesting about these plans is that there was feedback provided by stakeholders that said, well, yes, you decide and you elect which plan you want to, right? You pick the state that you want, you don't actually have to live in that state. In fact, I live in North Carolina and we are invested in the 529 for the state of Virginia. Um, and so you don't have to live there. You get to pick what you want to invest uh, in, in terms of which sponsor you want to invest in. And so the theory was you're making an investment decision and therefore you have a direct financial interest. But what the feedback was um, from many organizations or many people, <coughs> excuse me, um, what the feedback that they received was that maybe you don't know the currently what the underlying assets are um, as the account owner. And for example, I'll use my daughter. When we um, picked her plan uh, way back when, uh, she was six weeks old, we picked a plan that automatically changed every two years. So as a baby, it was invested in pretty, you know, uh, you know, risky types of investments because she had 18 years until she would go to college. Um, but then when she went to kindergarten, it got a little res less risky. And then when she went to middle school, it got even less risky. And this year she is in high school and it is basically <laughs> pretty uh, liquid investments at this point. And that happens automatically. Automatically. We don't have to do anything. Every two years, the plan automatically updates because of her change in age to a more and more um, you know, reasonable uh, investment platform. And so people said, well, we don't necessarily make those decisions. That happens naturally as part of the plan process. And so uh, during the update uh, where they went out and did a you know, work plan, they asked for feedback. Uh, and so the feedback that was received was that we aren't necessarily sure that we know who, um, you know, who the which underlying securities are specifically owned at any given point in time. And so this is kind of interesting because based on that feedback, I had an expectation of a very different response. I thought that they were going to make 529 plans a little bit uh, easier to work with. Now, they did that, um, but not in the way that I expected. So instead of putting this out as a proposal for public comment, they actually did a technical correction and they only changed one word. So they retain the concept that a covered member has a direct financial interest because they are um, selecting which uh, sponsor to use and which plan, obviously. Um, however, what they did change is the safeguards. Under the prior standard, the threat would be mitigated if they had to do both. So they had to transfer the account to another sponsor and transfer to another account owner who is not a covered member. And they changed it from both to just having to do one. Um, I don't know if this really addresses at the end of the day, the um, issues that people had with this, which is again, I might not even know. And so this does require a little bit of uh, investigation still. Um, it does tell us that if it's gonna result in a penalty or tax that is significant to the account, not to the uh, owner, but to the account, you can continue to own it until it can be transferred without penalty, a significant penalty or tax, um, but that's staying the same. But the change was a little bit different than what I had initially thought we were going to see here. I thought they were gonna address that it wasn't a direct financial interest, um, but doesn't seem that that's the way that they decided to go. So a little bit of update on the ethics interpretation uh, related to these 529 plans. All right, so that's a wrap. I know this one was quick and dirty, but always want to make sure you're up to date on what's going on in the world of ethics. The AICPA's Professional Ethics Executive Committee has been putting out a lot of guidance and we want to make sure you know what's going on. So thank you guys so much for joining me and I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.